climate change has immediate consequences, not just long-range ones, and that's what we're here to educate people about, is how to change that future. So education is a key aspect of combating climate change because we, the youth, are the climate leaders of tomorrow. We are the ministers, we are the members, we are the lawyers, we are the doctors, we are the teachers. We must be prepared to deal with climate change and everything it brings in the future. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Stephanie Zuadik is a grade 11 student from Queen Elizabeth High School in Edmonton. She's a member of a team of students who presented a white paper on climate change action in schools to the Honorable Shannon Phillips, Minister of the Environment, and the Honorable David Egan, Minister of Education, just minutes after the government passed Bill 20, the Climate Leadership Implementation Act. Gareth Thompson acted as a resource person for the 3,000 students who collaborated on the paper. We engaged the opinion and the passion of over 3,000 students. We had 10 people who spent the weekend writing this, uh, this great report. We had 45 student leaders who spent uh, time every week hanging out together, uh, learning together. We had 2,200 students to respond to a survey that was sent out by the student leaders in eight high schools, both urban and rural across Alberta. It was a uh, tour de force. In May, Premier Rachel Notley met with these amazing students about their white paper, and she encouraged them to bring their recommendations to the ministers. The students want climate change in the curriculum. They want enhanced student learning more green infrastructure in schools, and professional development for teachers. You need to be prepared to handle the future of climate change because it really changes every aspect of their lives. I personally focused on curriculum. So within curriculum, we talked about uh, having a, an appropriate framework for K-12 education on climate change in schools. We talked about having hands-on learning experiences for students. And we also talked about teacher professional development within that and making sure that they have the proper resources and uh, framework for them to be teaching. So with this, we're talking about social studies, sciences, English, everything all across the board. It's about incorporating it into all courses and all subject matter. Students want to learn about climate change in class so they can help solve the problem before and after they graduate. They would also like to get outside more, to learn to reduce their carbon footprint, and to join advisory committees in schools and beyond. So this is actually our living classroom here at Queen Elizabeth High School, and this perfectly correlates to our student learning recommendations. So we split this up into three categories, the first of which deals with getting hands-on opportunities for students in environments like these. The second aspect of our recommendation deals with getting students involved with community leaders. And finally, we want to bring in student advisory committees. So first of all, for hands-on opportunities, we want to make sure that students have excitement within these certain environments so that we can promote learning. In terms of our advisory committees, we want to make sure that students actually feel that they have a voice and there's not a sense of pessimism. So this first begins with a, uh, a student body within our school board and that slowly expands on to a sort of provincial level where they can communicate with the ministers. But students are not content with just learning about climate change. They want schools to be models of sustainability. So we have three major recommendations for school infrastructure. The first being um, engaging students in reducing the energy and the materials that we consume within our classrooms and within our schools. The second one being that curriculum additions are placed on um, food production and energy production in our schools, so teaching us how we can create energy all by ourselves. And the third being that we create a fund that any and all Alberta schools can tap into to basically help with their climate leadership initiatives within their schools. So in our ideal world, we would have solar panels on all the roofs of our schools, and our schools would be models for sustainability within our communities and within our country. Students from all over Alberta participated in preparing the white paper. But in the wake of the devastating fires the province experienced this past spring, it was Helen Wang from Fort McMurray who gave full expression to the importance of addressing climate change. Well, I think more strongly of those issues now with the recent events that's happened. And, uh, and yeah, those events are 
likely a cause of the change in climate because since this spring has been the driest and the hottest and the most sudden of all springs. And yeah, that really hits the point closer to home and really motivates. Ministers Phillips and Egan told the students that they've been heard. The act that we just passed is that architecture, but now we move the furniture in. Right? And so initiatives like yours are exactly the kinds of partnerships that we want to explore moving forward. That's the thing that, that, that sometimes people leave out of, of this conversation is how ready Albertans are to move this province forward. Uh, we see it uh, uh, with folks like you, we see it with solar cooperatives in the cities, we see it with uh, dairy farmers out in, uh, uh, in rural areas moving forward. People are already doing all these fantastic uh, initiatives with no support whatsoever. So imagine what we can do now that we have the ability to reinvest uh, a price on carbon into these, these initiatives. I've been very pessimistic the entire time and through this entire process because you never know what's going to happen. Is somebody going to pick this up? Is somebody going to ignore it? So finally, with this passing of this bill that just went through Bill 20 and the fact that we just got a meeting with the ministers, I'm completely and amazingly optimistic about what just happened. As Stephanie Zawadik told the ministers, the antidote to despair is action. And these students have taken action. They've already moved way out of the classroom into the real world and are making a difference. You'll find a link to the student's white paper on climate change education at our blog at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. From Queen Elizabeth High School and the Alberta Legislature, I'm David Dodge. Speaking of students taking action in schools, check out our story on the Cochrane High School Sustainable Development Committee. They've raised almost $150,000 to install solar and energy efficiency projects in their school. They even helped develop a renewable energy framework for the town of Cochrane, where they live.